Hi, just a quick one. Uh, I'm going to do a small uh, processor upgrade on my Dual Xeon uh, main editing and rendering machine. Um, I'll link in the videos down below if you haven't uh, seen this puppy. But uh, yeah, it uses a Super Micro uh, motherboard, a XD9 something, AD something or other. Anyway, I'll link it in uh, down below. And we've got Dual Xeon processors um, E5 26. 30s and I'm going to upgrade these because I got a couple of cheap uh, It uses the LGA 2011 socket. I think there we go. Hopefully that's showing up I'm going to upgrade this to the uh, so from the E5 2630 to the E5 2680 Both of them are V2s now the I've got two of these um, got them cheap so they're a drop-in uh, replacement for the existing uh, 20 630s that I've got in here and these have a typical bench like a uh, pass mark benchmark of uh, 10,500 or thereabouts I think and I think the new uh, <coughs> uh, 2680s have about 16 and a half thousand so it's quite a significant uh, upgrade and I think it's uh, worth doing so I'll just quickly whip these out um, and put the processor in shouldn't take long at all now the E5 uh, 2680 V2 is not the fastest you can get in this uh, socket 2011 that we have on this uh, dual Xeon motherboard here but it's the by far I think the best uh, bang per buck uh, upgrade well they might be better like but they're slightly lower so I already had a you know a pretty fast uh, 2630 v2 in there but this was by far the best uh, bang per buck upgrade and I could I think I could take it up to 19,000 pass mark or something but it would have cost like you know 500 bucks per processor or a thousand bucks per processor or something you know nuts like that so it just wasn't worth the extra I've already done some uh, benchmarks on this thing before I did it and I'll do after as well you might notice that I don't have all the RAM populated I did actually have a full 128 gig of RAM but I've only been operating I had that for a while but uh, when I was having uh, problems with this thing I thought it might have been memory memory related problems so I took some out and I only left ended up leaving uh, 32 gig in there and that is plenty for those who are wondering for my video editing purposes I, I don't even use half of that I typically will run uh, use 16 gig I never get anywhere near the 32 gig I've got in here let alone the 128 gig I originally have anyway let's do the upgrade Clean off the existing solder paste on there with some isopropyl wipes. Put some paste on there. That should do it. We got five beeps. Oops, that's not good. No, it turns out that it uh, does work, so maybe it just needed to. Uh, <laughs> Might need to tweak the bias, but I missed the bias, and now I'm just running a memory diagnostic. But, uh, yeah, it, the processors are working. We wouldn't get this if it didn't. Yeah, we're in like Flynn. Here we go. It's the X9DA7E, by the way, uh, motherboard. And we've got 32 gig of RAM. And everything's hunky-dory. CPU configuration. Uh, 2800 megahertz 2.8 gig that's what we want um, that's what this processor is uh, designed to run at um, hyper threading uh, we want that uh, disabled power technology disabled energy we want performance um, you know we could set that for oh, balanced performance energy efficiency whatever let's just go for the maximum performance anyway CPU information make sure we haven't been diddled no nope. E5 2680 V2 at 2.8 gig. No workers. All right, let's check it out. Uh, we have the E5 2680 V2, 115 uh, TDP, the maximum power uh, dissipation, uh, operating power dissipation in this thing, up from, uh, I think, 85 from the 2630. So, um, but the big thing we see, look on my uh, CPU uh, monitor over here, we now have 20 cores because there's 10 cores 
per CPU physical cores, none of this virtual rubbish, uh, as opposed to the six cores we had before. Here's a screenshot of uh, my previous uh, processor running its 12 cores. So hopefully it should be much quicker for those programs like Handbrake, for example, that I use for uh, compression. Uh, sorry for uh, for transcoding uh, the videos um, before I upload, then it should be much quicker. Excuse the banana. This is a banana. Um, it's a very good banana. Mmm, banana. Uh, yes, um, socket 2011 LGA, everything's hunky dory, 2.8 gig. All right. We're cooking with gas. So um, I'll just run some benchmarks and see how it compares. All right, so what I'm going to do is, sorry you can't see this, it's off the screen here, but I'll just drag and drop my, uh, I've got a test file, 50 frames per second. Here we go. Here it is. The handbrake is running. There we go. And this took 10 minutes and 57 seconds before. You can see now all the CPUs. It's using all 20 cores, practically 100%. It's amazing I can screen capture in the background. In fact, I better shut down the screen capture. That's um, no doubt impacting the uh, processor. All right, I've done that test. I'll just run it uh, again. Just this is not not a genuine one, but I'll just uh, run it to show you it running. Um, basically, it was... Uh, I was getting, as you can see up the top here before, I was getting like an average of 56 frames per second or something, and it took 11 minutes. Uh, sorry, yeah, it took almost uh, practically 11 minutes uh, to do that, and now it's um, actually 100, and this uh, screen capture is not slowing down a huge amount. It was actually 120 before, maybe average, now it's 112. Anyway, it only took 6 minutes and 42 seconds compared to 10 minutes and 57 seconds before. So that's like a 40% increase in speed. So that's actually better than what the Passmark benchmark, uh, which is kind of that industry standard uh, website uh, benchmark, that um, it would lead you to suggest. That's because we've got an extra um, 8 cores now. We've gone from 12 cores before to 20 cores now, and Handbrake can make use of every one of those cores, as you can see. So it's splitting up the, uh, the encoding, the transcoding uh, tasks into more cores, more cores, even though I think this is, is this slightly slower processor? Is this like 2.8 gig as opposed to 2.9? I can't remember. Anyway, yes, and as for power consumption, I've got the open hardware monitor here. Uh, yeah, it's drawing a bit more power. This is what we had before, I think. Uh, what was it? Yeah, like the CPU core was at 30. Hang on. Whoa. Uh, was it 51 watts during rendering or something? Yeah, 40 degrees. Now the process is up to uh, 50. No. Yeah, the process is like at 42 degrees. It's not getting warm. You know, it's not hugely hot or whatever. The idle power is just like slightly more than what I had before. There's really nothing in it because these modern processors are very good. When they're doing nothing, they sort of, you know, go into... Uh, a, you know, they go into low power mode and I haven't tweaked the bias to go into, like this is tweaked for performance as well, uh, full on performance, so I haven't uh, done that. But yeah, as you can see, the uh, CPU is near 100% and the total package dissipation is only 70 watts at, uh, you know, and the cores internally are like 40 degrees, whoop de doo like 42, 43, max 44 maximum. So. It's not much at all. So it's running really quite cool. Um, the fans don't spin up in the in the case that I've the Corsair case I've got. You know, it it's fantastic. It's super silent. Um, and it's quick. That is a really good uh processor upgrade. And now I'll just try a uh not a Sony Vegas, not Sony anymore, just a Vegas uh, test, but transcoding is the big test because it flogs all the CPUs at 100%, and I'm getting basically a 40% increase in that um, under the exact same conditions right into the same drives. No, the drives are not a bottleneck, um, trust me. That's almost pure CPU horsepower. We've just got more cores now. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. And I'll just run a quick uh, render test here. And I'll render, uh, the, I've just got a test uh, project mixing 50 frames per second footage and 60 frames per second footage, just exactly two minutes long with a couple of text overlays, you know, quite typical of what I would do here. And I'm going to use the main concept uh, one because that'll flog the uh, CPU. 
and I'm going to do uh, 1080p 50 frames per second. So I'll just uh, run that and save it to my solid state drive so there's no uh, bottleneck. Yes, I wish to overwrite and uh, well, yeah, I'm screen capturing now. So obviously it's not going to be relevant. Let me run it. Shut down my screen capture. I'll come back. Okay, I've ran all the tests. I've got the numbers. Um, Basically, Handbrake gives the best performance because it's optimized for uh, the multi-core application uses all 20 cores, flogs them at near 100%, and I got a 40% uh, speed increase on that. So if it took 100 seconds before, it now only takes 60 seconds, uh, which is awesome. And um, it's slower on uh, Vegas, uh, with Vegas rendering using the main concept uh, codec at 12 uh, megabits average. Um, it was 425, 4 minutes 25. Now it's 2 minutes 55. That's about a 35% um, increase, which is still pretty good, um, <clears throat> but not as good as uh, Handbrake. Uh, and then we've got the Sony uh, codec, which I typically use for the uh, 50 frames per second. Uh, that went from 5 minutes 12, uh, 5 minutes 21 to 4 minutes 12, only a 20% increase. So not that great because um, it, uh, for uh, some reason, because of Vegas, um, it only uses half the cores. So it was only using 10 cores um, and doesn't even use them all at 100%. So 20% you know, is where I would have uh, guesstimated anyway. And in and with the uh, 30 frames per second XD cam, where I can render uh, a two minute video in, in 54 seconds before, um, it was really super duper quick. It now takes uh, 49 seconds. So not a huge increase there at all. So obviously there's some IO bottleneck and other stuff happening there. The processor didn't really uh, dominate there. Otherwise we would have seen a huge improvement but overall that is a fantastic upgrade especially for handbrake and especially if i use the uh, x264 rendering from uh, sony i haven't actually tried that but that uses the same um, x264 as what's used in uh, handbrake handbrake's just a shell around x264 uh, uh, encoding um, engine so um that's a huge so i can get like 40 percent increase in that for what, 100 or 200 bucks maybe, um, that, because uh, I'll sell, you know, sell my old uh, processors, depends on how much I get back uh, for those, um, and it was probably not a very expensive upgrade at all for like a 40% processor improvement on video rendering, so that's absolutely fantastic, happy with that, gone from uh, 12 cores, which was um, kicking ass, to now 20 physical cores uh, at 2.8 gig, um, Xeon, so fantastic. Yes, you can get slightly faster processors, as I said, in the Socket 2011 uh, format, which my motherboard, Super Micro motherboard uses, but unfortunately, um, they, are, they are really, really expensive. So this was by far the best bang per buck processor upgrade. So anyway, hope you like that. I'm very happy with that. It worked a treat. Catch you next time.